this is the cord here, right? Okay. This is the net. Okay. So if you are a player here, okay, right. you must not be closer to the line than the player that's on this side or on this side of you. Okay. okay. So you must be in this position. You cannot you have a boundary to here to here. Right? Okay. But that doesn't mean that all three players, so let's let me do it this way. Let's go uh, 8, 24, uh, 53, and uh, so they all can move this way such that that's a legal lineup. Okay. Because 53 is in between these two players still. Okay. All right? So so long as that's true, that's always that's a, that's okay, right? Okay. right? So when we shift our offense and shift things around and they're starting to serve receive, right. they might shift in a way that allows them to put certain players in certain positions, okay. but still not violate this rule. Okay. Okay. So the other rule for this is that 53 cannot be closer than the person in front of him. Okay. Right. So that has a boundary there. Right. So this is also legal though. As long as 31 is in front of him. As long as 31 is in front of him. Okay. Okay. So 53 can never come up and spike or block. Right. All right. Because 31 has to be in front. Okay. At the beginning of the serve. <laughs> okay. So 53 has this rule. They have to be in between okay. these two guys okay. and behind this guy. Okay. To start. To start the, the serve. Serve. Right. Okay. What's interesting here, though, is that four have no bearing on 53. Oh. So this is actually a legal position. What rotation is this? What is this called? This is just, this is called the overlap rule. Overlap rule. Yeah. All right. So you cannot overlap a person that is in front of you or to either side of you. Okay. Right? The angle doesn't matter. All right. Right? So in this case, this one is number five here. So number five can be here. So even though five is a is is a front row person here, right. this there's no overlap rule between 53 and five. Okay. Right. So I'm gonna say five is here. So the front row the front row can move in where they want. And technically the back row can too, from the standpoint of like if, if we want to do this. can be here. Okay. Right? So if 53 is behind five, that's okay. Okay. Because the only person that he has to be in front behind is 31. 31. Right? So the diagonal prequel doesn't matter. Okay. Right? So now let's rotate this. Okay? So take another rotation. So now 53 is in this position to start. So number 12 rotates up to this spot. Okay. Number five rotates this way. 31 is now here. Uh, 44 is here. 24. 24 is here. Okay. Okay. So now 53 has overlap rule. You cannot be in front of the person in front of you, and you cannot be the side of a person beside you. You can't, you can't do what? You cannot be closer to the other side as the person to your side. Okay. Right? So. 
53 cannot overlap 24, and 53 cannot overlap 12 now. So why does that rule only apply to 53 and not the rest of them? So it actually applies to every one. It does. So now the rule basically, if you take this rule and say, okay, for any player on the court, you are not allowed to overlap a person to your side or in front of you. Well, when you did this, when you moved number five here, five to, you had five somewhere else. Five was here first, right? Right. Okay. And then you moved. So if I can move five to here, then that's illegal, that's legal. Okay. Because Good. five's rule is he has to be in front of 12, <laughs> 12, 12, right? And cannot be overlapped with 31. 31. Okay. All right. So one way to draw this, so this is the starting positions. So if I draw a line like this, this is called your starting position. Okay. All right. So the rule is you cannot overlap a person who's got a position that beside you. Okay. On either side, and or front to back. Okay. Front to back on either side. Right. But so when we rotate, every time we rotate, we rotate counterclockwise. So 53 goes into here. 12. Five. That's clockwise, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, clockwise. Yeah. Okay, I'm a woo, lost. I know. <laughs> sorry. Right, so the next rotation is this. Right, so each time we're rotating. Rotating around. Okay. Right. So every time we when we win back to serve, we rotate. Okay. Right? So all the way around is how we rotate, right? Once you win back to serve. Yeah, when you win back to serve. Okay. So if the same server wins and keeps going, you don't rotate. Okay. You only rotate if you win back to serve from the other team. Okay. So in volleyball, it's called a side out. Okay. Right? So you hear the term side out, that means you won back to serve. All right. Okay. Um, so we can repeat that all the way through. Okay, right? I understand that concept. Right. right. So, so based on that, the overlap is always going to be checked on, on this situation, right? Okay. So you cannot overlap a box to your side or not. Now, you can change the shape of these boxes, right? So let me look at this set here. So this is a valid way to do this. So we can do 5, 12, 14, 31, Because five is behind 31, right? It's still to the left of 12, right? 14 is still in front of 12, right? To the right of and 31. to the right of 31, and to the left of, left of 44. 44. Damn, that's confusing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? Wow. Well, but, that's, but that's only if you're doing that's defense. So this is like what we call serve receive. Serve receive. Usually, yeah. when we serve receive, we have these different situations because what we're trying to do is the guys who pass the ball the best right. we want to put them in position to pass the ball okay the guys we want to hit we want them to put in a position where they can just concentrate on hitting hitting the ball right okay so the guys like Kingston and Matt and Chris and Kai who play that hitting middle position right we want them to go up fast so we don't want them to worry about passing the ball okay so on serve receive that's the only time we have control of the situation where we can say Everybody's gonna start in a position where you can focus on what your job is. Sweet. Okay. Right. And then you rotate to your position. And then you move to your position. I was wondering why you all did that. It's almost like it feels like you know, you know in basketball you do the inbound and yes, the basket. Exactly. You line people up. Okay, so that's what it is. Right. So if you did a stack in, in basketball, right. right, line drill, right? Right. And you want to put your five at the end of it, you put right. your one and your two in the front, or your you have your threes inbounding and you right. put your four, you stack in order. 
Right? You see the other people do the other, you know, the five in the front. Yeah, 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 yeah right? Right? Okay. right, so it's the same type of thing as stacking. The only difference here is we have rules that say you can't, uh, you can't violate this basic, basic lock. Basic lock, okay. Right? So if every one of these, so there's six possible rotations, okay? Right? So five could be in any one of these six as you rotate around, and then it repeats again. Okay. Right? But are, the, are the refs, are they actually watching this? Yeah. So, so what happens when you mess up? So that's a penalty. Okay. Blow the whistle, it's a point for the other team. Oh, so your yeah. penalty is a point. Yeah. Oh, great. So they, they call what's called an overlap violation. Okay. And they are watching it. Okay. Um, and so you'll see, like, when you see Mikey, like, standing behind the guy and then running up after the serve. Yeah. It's because he's waiting. Once the service happens, this rule goes away. Okay. Right? All right. So it's only at the beginning of the play does this rule apply. Okay. After that, after the ball is in play, you go anywhere you want. Okay. Right? Right. To an extent. Right? To an extent. Okay. So, so then we'll talk about front row back in a second. All right. Right? So Man, when we are... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's better for me to tell you because then you can help it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll yeah. see the video and it won't make sense to him right away. It, it, it'll come together. Yeah. It, it doesn't... Believe me, this is not natural. Okay, right? not at all. <laughs> this is like rules that like someone made. If you think about the old way of like what they made volleyball for was to be not active. Right, and you right? don't really, oh. So they want you to be in your spot and stay in your spot. Wow. But then everybody else said, well, wait a minute. One guy got a little bit smarter, like, hey, if I just move over here a little bit more, I could win a lot of points. Okay. If I move this way, I can win a lot of points. Right. And then people evolved the game into a more athletic game. All right. And they found like boundaries of the rules. Okay. And so they've had to like implement more and more of these like, well, what do we want the game to be? And so the, top, the rules have evolved since then. So Beautiful. I love it. Right. right. But yeah, I mean, in the old days, you stayed in your spot. Okay. You didn't move at all. These days, like, okay, well, if I have to stay in my spot to start, Five and then afterwards on the switch, right? So, okay. so this is what we call serve receive. Right before you come down receive. Sorry. Right. Now, let's say we're playing defense though. Using the same rotation. Right? Hold on, so this is offense when you serve. Uh, serve receive. Serve receive. Yeah, yeah, we call offense, right? Service because receive. we're we're getting the ball, okay. right? And we're about to run our offense, right? Right. Okay. So, what we'll do in this case, and let's just say this. Um, so the purpose of for the purposes of this now, we'll say this is what's called the setter. Fifty-three will always be my setter. Okay. All right. Uh, Twelve and fourteen will be called what's called a middle blocker. That's what Kingston is. That's what Kingston is, right? Okay. The outside hitter we'll call the OH. For outside hitter. Outside hitter, right, okay. And then we'll call this person OPPO or opposite of the setter. Okay. In some systems that will be another setter. Okay. Right? And so what you see here is it's actually it's a mirror. Everybody has a corresponding opposite. Okay. So then when you rotate around. You always have at least one OH in there, right? Right. And one middle block. Right, right, right. Right. right? So the spacing is always going to be that way. So you Makes always sense. have one of those types of players in the front and one of those types of players in the back. Okay. All right. So when we play here, so in this particular case, What we call rotation one. Okay. one because the setter is in the first position right so generally what it's a kind of silly rotation thing but the way they these boxes are numbered is this is one this is two three four five six. Okay. Okay. so we call this rotation one Row, row one, so this is the first position, right? Okay. So what we can do here is we can say 44 is here, uh, 14 is here, 31 is here, 5 is here, and 12 is here. Okay. 
okay? So this doesn't violate any of the rules. The, the overlap potential is here, right? So if 53 got in front of 44, it would be a violation. All right. Okay? As soon as the serve comes over, though, or as soon as he contacts the ball, 53 is going to run up to here to set the ball. Okay. All right? 14 is going to dive out and then come into attack. Okay. All right? 44 is going to attack on this side, and 31 is going to attack from this side. Okay? So that's how the attack looks on this position, right? Okay. So when we have Kingston up here in row one, right, he's going to drop back and immediately come up to attack. Okay. Right? These are the primary people who are responsible for receiving the ball. Okay. Right? Sometimes he might help a little bit on this side, like a shorter ball or whatever, right? right. So, if this is sort of the position where one. Now we go into defense, we might have this for a situation where 31, 14, and 44 are blocking now, right? And in this case, we all, we usually rotate this way. Because what we want on defense is we want the OH to play in the middle of the back row. The outside hitter. Yeah, the outside hitter is going to play in the middle back. Why is that? Usually it's because this person is a better passer. Oh. And moves a little, has more lateral motion. Okay. Right? Middle blockers tend to be bigger guys who right. move front back, maybe not so much lateral. Not side, right. Right? Now this is also when we get to the libero substitution later on, but we'll talk about that later. Right? Okay, right. But generally speaking, this is where the middle blocker plays defense. Okay. The setter plays defense on this side. Okay. Right. And in this case, we're going to leave the opposite here, the other middle blocker here, and again the OH here. Right. So how did five move over, twelve move here? Because they they changed this. Right. That's on the serve receiver when they got to be in the right position. Right. But on defense, they can switch. If we receive it, right. You can switch at the top. Right. So, 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 the, so the rotation rule is based on serving. Serve when you serve it. Right. Well, the either team is serving. At the beginning of a play, you have to watch the rotation. So, okay. what we might do is you'll see this happen, right? Where we'll say, okay, well, five is here, five will stand right there, and 12 will stand here, and he's going to move here, and he's going to move here. Okay. Right. Right. So at the moment of serve, they have to be in the correct position based on the rule. But as soon as the serve happens, they can switch. Okay. Okay. Switch off. All right. So whenever you look at any of these schemes and things like that, you'll see this sort of pattern developing of serve receive versus defensive positions. Right. Okay. So defense can also be when we serve. So when we serve? When we serve, we want to get ready to be in our position. Okay. Right. So let's take this another step here. Let's go into this rotation. Oh, okay, yeah. so this is where we serve and then they hit me back to us. Right. We switch back over. Because we don't have any control. Once we serve the ball, yeah, we, it's, all, uh, it's all on them. Right. Now we play defense. It's interesting you say that. So yeah. the serve, I thought the serve was offense, oh, but that's yeah. actually defense. Okay, wow. Yeah. Dang. You're right, that's a like yeah. a little bit of an odd twist on this, right? In volleyball, offense is when we get to hit. Right. So we don't get to hit when we serve. Okay. Right? Right. So yes, that's sort of an in-between one, honestly, right? But right, right. generally when guys talk about it, serve receive is offense. Right. Defense is when we're blocking and digging. Digging, okay. Right. Right. So but what's digging? These, uh, uh, when the guys spike me really hard and we're bumping the bundle. Okay, yeah. bumping, okay. Yeah. So these guys are, are diggers. Okay. Right? So that's, that's where the arm is out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's you have the shovel in the ground and you're digging. Damn, that's good. All right. Okay. Um, so the guys up front are blocking. Right. All right, guys in the back are digging. Okay. All right. Good. Um, so we take that one more step. Right? Okay. So this is row two. So what we do in row two is we can do 31 here. 14 here, right? 53 stands here. 34 is here. Uh, well, so 
53 has to be in between 12 and 44. Right. Right? But behind 31. So 31 is still slightly in front of them. Yeah, okay. slightly in front of them. 31 has to be in between 5 and 14. So you see this very wide here. Yeah, it is. Okay. All right. Right? And really, right, I mean, we think about 31 could stand all the way over here if we wanted to. Good. Good. Long as it's in front of 53. As long as it's in front of 53 in between these two guys, it's fine. Okay. Right? So there's more room there, but there's a reason in our offense why we do this. I'll show you in a second. But first, right, for receive. And again, we want our OHs. OH is passing, so 44 and 5 are OH. Okay. And our middle back is the, our middle blocker is the other passer in this case. Okay. okay. Alright. Okay. Now we substitute in a libero, we'll talk about liberos in a minute. Okay. That's generally what we want, right? Alright. So offensively what we want is we want the center, so once the serve happens, the center just has to run to there. Okay. Where it's a short run, makes it easy for the center. 14 is our middle blocker. So he's going to come around and hit this way. 14 is the middle blocker? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Okay. So 31 is our opposite. In this case, he's going to swoop back around and hit this way. Oh. And 5 is going to hit this way. So even though you start off in a different position, if you're still a middle blocker, you're still swooping around yeah. for that middle. Exactly. Wow. Okay. Right? So although you might be in a different position, Still going for the same. We want you to attack the same, same spot, spot. right? It's right? okay. like having that, you know, your tight end, right? You want that tight end running that short slant or right. that curl, butt hook in the middle, right? Right. Your receiver is streaking down the sideline, right? Right. Our outsides and our oppos are the ones sitting outside, right? Right. Okay. So middle blockers are our pounded down the middle guys, okay. right? Uh, our outsides are our flyers. Okay. Right? So that's right. what we kind of look at is that, that idea of that. Now, the same concept. Later right. on, we get into like real tricky stuff later, okay. but for right now, the basics of it is middle blockers, pound that middle. Okay. Always pound the middle. So wherever you are, you pound the middle. We're going the middle. We're pounding okay. it. Right? All right. Right? And so let's take that one more step now. Is that where a lot of new guys start at as middle blocker or is that because Kingston is not your size? It's a combination of the two. Okay. My philosophy, JJ, because JJ, we like the middles. Right. Right. Because what you actually learn is tempo and hitting. Right. Right. And nowadays, it's really important, even for the flyers, to be faster. Right. Right. In the old days, like the flyers were like a safety valve. You just threw it up high. And you just don't get it. Right. right. Nowadays, it's all about timing. So if you don't understand how to hit timing, you're not going to succeed in any of their positions. Okay. Right. And so. I like teaching the middle first because that teaches you timing. That you learn to understand what that means early. Okay. But yes, yeah, size also helps because as a blocker, right, the other teams are thinking the same strategy. They're putting their big guys in there too. Right. And we'll, we'll talk about sort of block strategies and why that's important. Okay. Uh, in a second. But let's, let's finish this one here. So now 14 went to the back row. Okay. 14 right. is the middle block. Middle block. Right. Okay. So if he just went to the back row. And our other, our new middle blocker is 12. Okay. Right? All right. So now he's in the front, right? So when we serve receive here, we want. Oh. This one is confusing. I'll show you. This one is really. Interesting. Forty-four is still behind five. Yes. And he is. To the left of 53, to the right of 14, to the right of 53, to the left, okay. Right. Which so this behind. one is interesting because of the fact that 5 is to the left of 53. Yeah, because we know that. Because I thought... But it's okay. But it's okay. It's okay because it can move anywhere. Exactly. Oh. So this is the example of where this diagonal doesn't matter. Okay. Right? 
The only rule is the boxes to the side and to the front back of you. So five, or yeah, five is technically between 12 and 31, and in front of 44, so that is okay. okay. Where 53 is in relation to the five has no difference. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. Okay. Right? So because we know- The lowest 53 is not in front of 12. Right. The lowest is not in front of 12 or to the right of 44. 44, that's right. Okay. Exactly, right? And so if 53 is our setter and they want our setter to get to the right spot, we want to make the run as short as possible. Okay. Right? So out of this offense, right, 53 is going to run to here in the set, right? 12 is going to loop back and hit the middle again, right, because that's our middle blocker. Right. Five is our outside hitter, so he's going to get out here, right? And 31 is going to come in and hit the outside here. Oh, sweet. Right? Okay. So again, the hitting patterns are always the same. Two outsides and a Two middle hitter. Two outsides and a middle hitter. Okay. Two outsides and a middle hitter, right? All right. So, when we receive, as, before the contact happens, we have to be in our positions that don't overlap. Okay. As soon as the serve is touched, we can move. Whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do. All right. All right. So, now the only difference is now we're talking but, about- But you don't move, though, until the ball comes over. Until it's the contact. But if he contacts the ball, because there's the ball, and we're set like this. How can you move fast enough? You gotta be ready. <laughs> exactly. And that's why middle blockers, we don't want you to pass. <laughs> okay. So you gotta be the first hitter, right? Good. So if you're passing, you can't move fast enough. No. Not possible. No. Really hard. It right? is. This guy has the hardest job in that regard. Five, right. Because if the serve comes to number five, he has to pass the ball, so he has to stay here as long as he can, right? And then move. Okay. Right. And so the uh, outside—that's why they're like our sprinters, right? Okay. They're our fast guys who can get up and get it going fast. Okay. Right? So there are our outsides where they can take this long run up again. So you see, in both of these situations, five has to wait here, pass the ball, and then run his attack. Right. Okay. Right? Okay. So 44 in this case is the outside hitter. Has to pass first and then run his attack. Pass first and run attack. You pass in the setter. Yeah. So the sets it and then you will set it for either one of the middle or, or the two outside. Yeah. And that's okay. why like the setter has to recognize that he can't like if this guy passed the ball, right. this setter can't has to set this high enough for that guy to get time and to get around and get in there and hit it at the same time. Right. Okay. Right. Makes sense. So, so, the set of, so the set has to be really aware. Yeah, they got to be aware. That's what okay, so the pass has to be really fast, set has to be really aware. Great communicator. Right. Communication. Right. The setter becomes like the quarterback, the point guard. They're okay. setting up the offense. They're making sure everybody's in position. Right? Okay. Are we in five out? Are we in you know double downs? Are we in whatever, you know, full, whatever set we're running? Okay. The setters are communicating. So you'll see the setters, they'll be like making hand signals to the guys. No one saw that. Yeah, so you'll see Mike he'll make hand signals. So Mike is JJ's son. Yeah. I never I never saw the hand signals. Yeah, so you start watching, Damn. they start doing hand signals and they're telling these guys what they want to hit. Are you serious? Right. So, wow. So you know the There's a lot more is, to this than yeah. This offense is getting really complex. Okay. Right. So uh, we'll get into that a little bit. Okay. Let's make sure we got the rotation basics down first. Okay. Right? So when you see the rotations, you'll see OH, middle blocker, right? right? But you always have to reference this is what we call um, base, right? Base position, or uh, some people call it uh, starting. Starting position, okay. And then this is service this is defense. Okay. Right? So again, so if we're in this situation now, let's talk about defense again. Defense is when we're serving. Okay. Okay. Right? So our front row players are the people that are blocking. Okay. Right? So 5, 31. Oh. Okay. Right? 
where they start. The 44 is the server. Okay. Right. When we play defense, five is an outside hitter, so he's already on the outside. 14 is our middle blocker. He is on the right side first, right? So 31 and 14 cannot overlap, Okay. right? But as soon as the serve is contacted, we want these guys to switch, okay. all right? So a lot of times you'll see that the guys will have Kingston at the net and they'll yeah, be like yeah, right yeah. behind them or something, right? right. right? They'll move over. Right, so they tell them to move over or something, right? right. And so this is, as long as they're not overlapped in the beginning, it's fine. Okay. Now what again we want is, we want those middle guys to set the boundary. So what we'll tell them is, fourteen can start here. So then he doesn't have to run as much. Okay. Right? And then so if the other attack is very fast, 14 drive. Okay. Right? And then 12 is in already what we want. We want 12 to be in the left side. We want middle back to always be here. Okay. And then 44 is going to serve and he's going to come into this spot. And then we want the center to move to this spot. Why why is center moving? So, if you think about the setter, we want the setter to always run offense from this position, which is slightly right of center. Okay. So that's a shorter run spot space. Okay. So, evolution of strategy and everything else is that the right it's here. easier for them to run from that side. Okay, because on top of that, this person is going to come this way around. Right, exactly. And come back in. Because you don't want to bump into each other. Exactly. Makes sense. Exactly. All right. right. So, yeah, we're in this defense. And now we're transitioning to offense, right? Because in theory, we're going back and forth, back and forth, right? Right. We want 53 to be in a way where he can get in and out easy, right. and the middle can just come back and forth without bumping into him. Sweet. If you had him in any other position, you risk colliding a little bit. Right, makes right? sense, it makes sense. So, uh, and they efficiently, right? Uh, the only thing is most people are right-handed. Okay. So if your hitters are right-handers, it's easier for the ball to come at you this way. So you want to be on to the left of the setter. Okay. The ball will come to you on your right side. Right, right. Now, if you had a team of all lefties, you might reverse this. Should be run another way. Yeah. Makes sense. If you had all lefties, right? right. Rare. To see what, a team what, what if you got one lefty? So uh, yeah. it still causes a little issue. Yeah, yeah. It causes an issue. We, I have the problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we got a couple of the situations like that. I understand. Um, right. And so. Same thing here. So 53 is started here, right? So 53 is here. Uh, five is front row. Uh, five is here. So in this rotation, right? 12 is the middle blocker. Five is the outside hitter. 31 is the opposite. So we want the middle blocker to block in the middle. Okay. Right. So again, to do that, we can just put 12 here and five here, so five will move out this way, okay? Okay. So we want 53, who's our setter, to be into the right back. Right back, okay. Right, so as soon as the set serve hits, he's gonna run this way. This way, okay. And 14 is our other middle blocker, right? So he's the middle blocker, and we want middle blockers to play on the left side. Oh, okay. Right, so he serves and then move that way. Yeah. You can use the 44 swings here. And 44 in this case, step, yeah. Okay. Right? So again, they're not overlap, and it's okay. So this is, okay, this is where it started. Yeah. So you didn't have to move that time. Oh, you really, you just kind of shift over to the right. Yeah. It's easy that way, yeah. Right. I like that. Right. So, there's some other strategy that you can kind of play with this now, right? And right. start to see, and, and a lot of times, like this guy, right? When you're off the court, it doesn't matter. So when you're serving, you can technically serve from here. Oh, you're serving when you want, so it doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter. Oh, uh, what's the difference? What makes it? What difference does it make? You want like recognize like a weakness on their team, something like that. Yeah, some guys have preferences where like if I always serve and I serve to my right, right, 
then I'm gonna move to the left and so that I have more court to go with. Oh, uh, right, right, right. right. I'm a weak guy. But yeah, some of it is strengths and, and weaknesses. Do I want to change something up with the other eyes? So the surf is a form of an attack, even though we didn't say it's offense. Right. That is your first chance to actually attack the ball at somebody, right? Okay. And so if you can figure out, just like we put our best passers in, in these positions to pass, right. maybe one of these guys is weaker. So now we want to go after that person. Okay. We want to serve at them. Okay. Right? So JJ will make call the service. So when we serve, we serve into these zones. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So if he says serve it to the one zone, that's serving it to this side. So if we're facing it, this is the net always here. Right. Right. I always draw a net on top. Some people draw a net on bottom. Makes sense. Right. But if it's the other side, right, you're serving to us. Right. Right. If they're serving the one zone, they're gonna to try to serve it here. Okay. Right? So a strategy, if we know that this guy has to run up here, I'm gonna serve it right here. Because that guy's trying to get to this spot, I'm gonna make it mess it up, right? Um, here is a great spot, like, if I'm serving to this guy's, there's a lot of action going on here. Right. If I serve the ball right in here, then this kind of messes up their action, yeah. right? And, you know, so there's like serving strategies that get into it, but that's deeper on, right? That's great. So I just showed you one through three. Okay. Really, four, five, and six are the same, just repeated. Okay. Right, to an extent, right? Okay. So like, the center, the hitters just rotated to the next one. Next position, right. right? So okay. by always keeping a person opposite on that type of position, you just flip it. Okay. So especially if I said that this was actually a setter. Okay. He was setting it then, he would move somewhere right here. He could. He would get right. a sugar over here. Right. So he could easily get over. Yeah. Okay. Right. So a lot of times what we'll say is, okay, so now we're talking about front row, back row. Right? Front row are the people on this side. Back row are the people on this side. Okay. Right? So, in every one of these rotations, as you rotate, you're either the front row or the back row. Right. And if one person gets to be in the front row for three positions, and then back row for three positions. But I know it's the case that he never, whenever he, he rotates, yeah, just always the front. in the front row. And then, after those three rotations, he'll move out. They sub, he out. sub them out. Yeah, so, so that's the middle the, block. Right. Exactly. He doesn't know all the different positions yet. Right. Okay. And so, and then what we what most teams have found is that this is where you get the what's called a libero. Okay. All right. A libero is a different type of substitution. Right. Um, and what it is is usually a defensive player that's automatically allowed to only play defense. Okay. You cannot hit the ball. Really? Yeah. Not allowed to hit the ball. Wow. Right. And so what we'll do, a lot of teams will do is they'll put in for this middle blocker who is supposed to be a hard pounder type of guy, maybe not the best passer, right? Right. We'll switch in one of the liberos to pass for them and play defense. Oh. The other thing is the middle blocker is the one expending the most energy. Okay. So they're in the front row. We expect the middle blocker to jump every play. Okay. Right. They got to be up there. They got to be blocking every time. They got to be hitting every time. Okay. Right, so that's a lot of energy. So the reward for that is you don't have to play in the back, you get a breather. Okay. Right, so you'll see whoever is the middle blocker. When they're they, jumping. When they, they jump, they have to jump all the time. Okay. Right. What about the original, what about the, on the initial serve? When they serving at them? Uh, yeah, we want them to go. Jump. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, as soon as we That's good to know. Offense, I'm glad you said that. I, yeah. I always wonder, I said, why don't they jump in the initial serve? Yeah. So you can't. Well, I don't know. Some rules. Sometimes they, the some serve comes, it comes right above the neck. It. Right. Yeah. I think I had to check the rules. There's some rules now that you can't block it anymore and oh. things like that. So, so we but don't. I'm like, oh, that's an easy like right. catch right there. Yeah. Right. So I got to check the rule books on what what league we're in right now. Okay. But, but generally, yeah, we don't block the serve. We okay. just want to get it and hit. But that person needs to be able to drop back quickly and be ready to run that first offense. Okay. Right. Right. So. Well, uh, what we'll call is, um, so now, if you use a 3D kind of look at it, but this is our net here in 3D. I'm a horrible artist, right? Good enough for me. The first 
first spot here is a one. It's one foot above the net. Okay. So when we say we want to run a one ball, we want to run it one foot above the net. One ball, one foot above the net. Right. What does that mean? So the setter is going to set the ball one foot above the net. Okay. So the hitter here has to be ready to get up and hit that fast. Because it's only going to be up the the net for quick second. Quick second. Yeah. Right. Out here we might call this a four ball. Right. And out here we're going to say that's four feet above the net. Now, do you hit it when it's going up or when it's coming down? Yes. You hit at the top of your jump. Top of your jump. Right. You got a timing problem. Right. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to hit at the top of top, your jump. Top of your jump. Right. You have a one ball in the middle. <laughs> A four ball on the outside, okay. right? And for different reasons, we call this the five ball. Five is the highest. Is the high, right? Okay. Yeah. So you're just gonna set that high and go the out there, right? Okay. So generally, like if this is the antennas here, right? Right. The, you know, it's very hard to get a one foot set out here. Okay. You go so far out. You're too far out. Right. Same thing either side, right? That's why the the bats are always in the middle spot. Okay. Right. And so our middle blockers, because you have a small climbing, taller helps. Okay. Right. Because right. you're you're only going to be up for a moment anyway. Right. You know you, you got to be quick, fast, jump, boom. Yeah. Right. Get it right. go. All right. right. Outside, maybe you have a little more time, like you said. Like I said, you're running up these long approaches, right, to get up to that ball. Okay. Right. Um, again, at the higher level, it doesn't matter, but at the at this age. It helps because you have more time to get there. You know, a little bit shorter, but as we get up there, like you'll see, my team is all pretty much six three across the top. Okay. You know, um, we got one guy who's like five nine, five ten, but he jumps out the building, so wow. he can you know get there. You get in there, make it happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's reaching probably like ten six. You know, as a Flash 